Today's lesson is 83351 on human populations and your ICANN statement for this lesson is I can identify areas of high population density in the US and Canada and then explain why certain areas have high population densities and others don't. So when we talk about population density in terms of geography we're going to look at four things that affect population density. And these are physical features, so waterways, landforms, climates, and natural resources. Two of those we've already talked about, so we'll really just focus on the first two. First one are waterways, and I've had people ask me this question, what's a waterway? Well, waterways are routes along rivers, lakes, or oceans that are used to get from one place to another. And they're important because they, uh, they give humans four different things. The first thing they give us is fertile land. And fertile means that it, the soil has the nutrients that, that's capable of growing large amounts of plants. And when you are able to grow crops, you can sell those crops for money, or you can raise animals and sell the animals for money as well. So really, they give us food. Um, waterways also provide transportation. That's why we'll see in a little bit that most of the early cities in the United States and Canada were created around waterways, either on the coast, near the ocean, or near rivers. Um, lakes allow us to explore and have recreation, but they also create trade routes that are good for our economy. So let's take a look. This is a physical map of the United States and Canada. And um, three main waterways here are oceans and gulfs, rivers and lakes. And so you can see our major bodies of water here are the Pacific, is the Pacific Ocean here, the Atlantic Ocean here, and then we have the Gulf of Mexico. That allows people to trade, um, trade our goods with other countries. So you can see there's some major cities along each of the coasts here. Our rivers, the St. Lawrence River, you can see Quebec, Montreal, and Ottawa are along that river. The Mississippi River, starting in Minneapolis and working all the way down through St. Louis, Memphis, and the New Orleans. We have the, o the Ohio River, you can see here, it goes right through the eastern part of the United States. And then the Missouri River that starts way up here and works its way through the, the Great Plains. And then we also have lakes. and the major lakes in North America are the Great Lakes, if you remember Holmes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. These are great for trade routes too. You see all of these cities that are around the Great Lakes. So, and these were the cities that I just listed. So we have Los Angeles, we have San Diego, we have New Orleans, we have Boston and New York. These are all port cities. This is where most of the goods that are traded with the United States come in. We have our rivers. Um, again, we have Minneapolis, St. Louis, Memphis, New Orleans. Um, the farm products that are created in the Great Plains can go through the Missouri River, the um, Mississippi River, and down through the Port of New Orleans to be traded elsewhere. We also have our cities here in Canada along the St. Lawrence River. We have um, Great Lake cities like Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Buffalo, Toronto. Um, we can trade between the United States and Canada on the Great Lakes if we need to. So let's compare our population density map with the physical map. And you can see, again, near the Great Lakes and the coast, that's where a majority of our population lives. The, this blue color is the most densely populated areas. And that's going to tell us um, where people live. Okay, let's move on to landforms. Why are landforms important? Um, first of all, landforms are any natural feature on the surface of the earth. And you did a whole cheat sheet on landforms. So mountains, plateaus, um, basins, all of those things are landforms. But landforms help, help us explain why people do or don't live in a certain area. Some landforms attract us to those areas. Some landforms um, keep people away. So the landforms that attract people are plains and lowlands, anywhere where it's easy to build and you have plenty of food um, and water. And landforms that repel us, I guess you could say, are mountains and deserts um, because it's really difficult in the mountains um, to build. It also has a lack of water. And again, the deserts have a lack of water. So um, if we look at our cities here, 
New York City, Chicago, Miami, Washington, D.C., they are all located on land that's pretty low-lying. And um, if we look at a population density map here, you'll see that not many people live here in the mountains and the deserts. There are some exceptions. Um, Salt Lake City is kind of in the desert and in the mountains, but they have a lake there, so there's a water source. Denver right here is kind of on the, the verge of the Rocky Mountains. And then Phoenix is in the desert, and so is Las, uh, Las Vegas. But they've created ways to have water sources. So you can see here um, this green area, that's low-lying areas. And so that's where a majority of, of the people live. And you can even see here, you know, Los Angeles here is kind of in the mountains, but it's, it's on the foothills of the mountains. And so it's a low-lying area near the near a water source. So climate is our third not, um, physical feature that affects population density. And again, this is just a review. People tend to live in moderate temperatures that has plenty of rain. So if we look at our climate map here and our population density map here, you can see that a majority of people live on this side of the United States where it's a, a fairly moderate climate. And then over here we get to the Mediterranean, which is warm and dry. And again, we have LA and San Francisco. Natural resources, this is also a review and you know that people tend to live near abundant natural resources for the job opportunities. And there's also plenty to eat and drink. Um, so we look at our natural resources map here. And again, we see our coal mining over here, um, our fishing. And this is where the, ma the major manufacturing and trade centers were created. And so that's why you see a majority of people living there. So in summary, I need you to write in your Cornell notes your summary of three to five sentences to answer the question, why do certain areas of the US and Canada have high population densities and others do not?